All righty. My name is Minister Kevin Gordon. I am your lecturer this morning. Uh, welcome to our summer quarter. Uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at uh, servants and healers. Um, our lecture will focus on uh, those who are faithful uh, to serve. And I'm going to be looking at this morning, uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. And we're going to pick up verses 19 and 20. Then we're going to look at chapter 7, uh, verses 3 through 5, and verses uh, 10 uh, and 12. And again, my name is Minister Kevin Gordon. Uh, we are in our summer quarter. And again, this quarter, we're going to be focusing on servants and healers. And again, the emphasis this morning is all going to be about faithful to serve. And we're going to be looking at Samuel's call and his ministry this morning. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you woke us up in our right mind, O oh God, and you have given us once again another opportunity, Lord, to serve you. And Lord, as we humble ourselves before you this morning, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, as I decrease before you, that, Lord, you would increase before us, O oh God. We pray, Lord, as we again examine your word, looking at uh, the call of your servant Samuel this morning, I pray that you would speak to our hearts, O oh God. Encourage us this morning, my God, to serve faithfully, O oh God. And Lord, as I peruse your word this morning, Lord, I confess that I certainly do not have the ability to open up the hearts or the mind of men, but Lord, you certainly do. And therefore, Father, we invoke your presence, O oh God. We ask that your spirit would be present, that Lord, you'll speak both to us and through us, O oh God. We pray that our ears will be open, Lord, for them to hear not my voice, but Father, your voice this morning. We pray, Lord, that not only they would hear your voice, O oh God, but we pray, Lord, as we hear your word, O oh God, that we would allow it to enter into our hearts, O oh God. And that, Lord, we'll be faithful and obedient, O oh God, to what it is that you reveal to us. It is in Jesus' holy, mighty, and majestic name that we pray. Amen. And again, for those of you who are a little bit late, just uh, tuning in, uh, again, my name is Minister Kevin Gordon. Uh, we are in our summer quarter. In uh, this quarter, we're going to be focusing on servants and healers. Uh, and in particular this morning, in Unit 1, we're going to be looking at those who are considered faithful to serve. Uh, our text this morning, we're going to be focusing on Samuel. Again, I am in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 9. Then we're going to drop down and look at verses 19 through 20. And we're going to go over also into uh, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3 through 5, and then again verse 10 and 12. And so what we're going to be looking at this morning is Samuel's uh, call from God, and we're going to also examine his ministry and see what God has to say to us. So as we read <clears throat> 1 Samuel chapter 3, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, and the child Sam Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass that when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called to Samuel and answered, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou called me. And he said, I called you not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I for thou did call me. And he answered, I called you not, my son, lay down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. 
And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou did call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be. If he call you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And again, in verses 19 and 20, it reads, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Bathsheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Uh, as we stop for a moment just to consider the circumstances uh, around Eli's call, and I think it's important to understand first and foremost how he got to the place of where he was. And, and we all know this is a very familiar story in the sense that uh, Hannah, his mother, was barren, and all of a sudden she cries unto the Lord, Lord, my God, I, I just, I need a child. So when she uh, 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 cried before the Lord, the Lord heard her cry. And the Lord said, you know, this time, a year from now, you'll have a son. And, and when the Lord spoke that to her, she made a vow before God that she would offer this child, Samuel, unto the Lord. And what was significant about that is the fact that uh, she made what is called a Nazarite vow, a Nazarite vow, and we're not going to talk much about that, but all that really is and at the end of the day is, and you can find this in uh, Numbers chapter 6. So all the Nazarite vow is is that when a person has decided to consecrate themselves to the Lord, uh, it's for a particular period of time. They simply cut their hair. They're not going to uh, eat anything that, 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 that was considered to be intoxicating, so that don't eat anything from the vine. Uh, they're pro prohibited from touching anything that's dead because they're holy. But what that person is doing is deciding to consecrate themselves to the Lord. This was the vow that was placed upon young Samuel as a child. Now, that's important to us when we consider uh, the background or the backdrop behind his call. Because stop to think about this for a second. <laughs> you know, the scriptures give us instruction with our children to train them up in the ways that they should go. And this is exactly what Samuel mother's, Samuel's mother did. She put Samuel in a position, first and foremost, that he could be used by God. And I think at the same time, if we did the same thing with our own children sometimes, nurturing them up, bringing them into the very presence of God, making a declaration in our own heart that, Lord, we're going to dedicate our children unto God, and perhaps, just perhaps, our children can be used in the same manner or in some fashion that this young child was. But nevertheless, the circumstances. So at this point, in Israel's history, I think it's important to understand that when the scriptures mentioned here in these first few verses that uh, the, Sam, the, the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord uh, before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, there was no open vision. And what he was simply saying here is this, that the word of God had not been spoken openly by the prophets. Well, we have to understand the reason for that. There was sin and idolatry going on in Israel at that particular time. Uh, not only was uh, the people searching and, and following after all the other gods in uh, the land of Canaan, but unfortunately, even the priests were corrupt. So we see this whole system where the people are falling short of God's glory, and we see where those who are in leadership, those who were uh, given the task of teaching the people, because we understand this, just looking at Eli's sons, Hopini, they're sleeping with the women in the temple. And not only are they sleeping, we got these Pentecostal pimps, but not only are they sleeping with the women, but that's what they was when you stop to think about it. I mean, they, they, they running around here, they screwing, I'm screw, excuse me, every, 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 every woman that they can get their hands on in the church. And so there's no wonder then that the condition of Israel is what it is at this particular point, where the word of God is precious. 
It's hard for the nation to hear the words of God. Why? Because of sin. And not only that, we see this being reflected by the leadership. And so this is the condition or the circumstances in which young Samuel begins his ministry. So he's brought before the Lord by Eli. He's trained as we see, as we're going to see rather, uh, 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 as a priest. But yet watch this. Listen to uh, God's call and Samuel's response. So we understand the circumstances of his call. And I think it's important to understand the circumstances because if you understood the circumstances, you would understand his call. And God is looking from the very beginning and understanding that at this particular point, there is nobody in Israel that I can talk to at this point. The lamp is getting ready to go out. And what that was signifying for you and I is that, man, this thing with Israel, if God didn't come in and do something, Man, the lamp of God was getting ready to go out in Israel. There would be nobody that God can speak to. Why? Because the people were in the place where they could no longer hear God. Their hearts, because of sin, have now waxed gross. And that's what happens with us when we, when, 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 when we, when we say that we serve God. But yet what I found in this is that it was funny. Samuel was able to hear, but Eli couldn't. The, the nation of Israel couldn't hear, but Eli and his sons were leading them into a place that was just further and further and further away from God instead of to God. But yet we see young Samuel when God calls that he's able to hear. And that speaks to us in the moment, if you will. Now, let's go back to this for a second. So we see that uh, God, when he began to call young Eli, four times he called him. And every time that he called him, he went to who? Eli. He went to Eli. Here's a, here's a point for us to ponder with respect to that. <clears throat> when God calls us, we hear. But we don't always recognize it's him that's doing the calling. Eli knew, or, or I'm sorry, Samuel knew God was speaking to him. He, he, he heard that voice. There was something that was going on on the inside of him that he was actually able to discern that God was speaking to him. So instead of him humbling himself before God and say, okay, Lord, I hear you, he couldn't hear him. So instead, he went to who? Eli. And sometimes this is what we do. I'll be honest with you. God is really speaking to us a lot of times. And what's happening with us, instead of us humbling ourselves before God and saying, Lord, here am I, what we end up doing a lot of times, we go to our spiritual leaders. <laughs> we go to uh, 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 the people who are around us because we know there's something going on on the inside of us. I can hear God calling me. I can hear God speaking to me. And, and sometimes when you're going to people who are spiritually dull, they can't always sense and discern and even confirm that God is speaking to you. And that's important to us. So we have to keep ourselves like young Samuel in a position that even when I don't know that you're calling me, God, I certainly hear you calling me. See, and, and that's what's important. Now watch this. Another point, the first person God reveals your call to is you. I understand that. He didn't speak to Eli about Samuel's call. He spoke to who? Samuel about Samuel's call. And that's the thing that we always need to understand when it, when it comes to our gifting and our calling in ministry. Pastor and I always talk. We have these conversations. And I told Pastor one thing. I said, Pastor, God will never speak something through me that when you're in a position that he hadn't already spoke to you. The only thing that, 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 that I am doing is confirming what God had already spoken. He may add some detail to it, 
further clarity to it. But when you're in a position to hear from God, trust me when I tell you, anything that God has called you to do, he's already spoken it to you. The problem is sometimes we don't always, we're not always able to discern it. That, that just as young Eli, he knew that God had spoken. He clearly heard his voice. And yet he goes to Eli, unfortunately, a spiritual leader who's, who, who at that point was clearly in a position where he couldn't hear or perceive the voice of God. Because I'll say this, had, had Eli been where he needed to be before God, when the first time God spoke, you know what Eli would have said? The Lord is calling. Because he would have confirmed his shoulder to him. But one of the problems that we have to deal with with respect to hearing God, and we're talking about being faithful servants. How can we be faithful to God when, we're in, when we cannot hear him? Amen. That's the key. We got to be in a place and in a position where we can hear God. Greater friendship keeps saying, we want what God wants. Well, what God is saying to greater friendship is that if you want to uh, uh, want what I want, you have to be in a position to hear what I'm saying to you. I, I don't want you showing up to church Sunday after Sunday and I'm doing all this speaking and you can't hear. And, and, and part of that is simply because of what's going on on the inside of us, the sin that's going on. Sin stops us from being able to perceive and hear the word of God. Notice what God's testimony was about Israel. Their hearts were waxed cold, gross, where they could not hear. And, and that becomes a spiritual problem for us. So a lot of us are really trying to find out what is our gift? What is our calling? And I'm going to say this to you. We have to be in a position just like young Samuel, where we position ourselves to be able to hear God. And the one thing that I learned about uh, a young Samuel, and I love it about him, notice something, that when he heard the voice of God, what did he do? Immediately, he got up and he obeyed. Our problem is sometimes God is speaking to us and we want to sit on it. We want to mold it down. We want to go over here and talk to so-and-so about it instead of immediately obeying what God is telling you to do, even if you're wrong about it. But you know you sense something in your spirit that says, okay, go do this or go say that or go do this or go do that. And, and what I loved about him is, as I said again, he was quick, he was immediate, and he was obedient to what God, and that is a lesson for you and I. Because I'll say this to you, watch this. Spiritual maturity, spiritual sensitivity, comes by way of obedience and prayer. Don't make it complicated. We got this long list of, of stuff you got to do to be spiritual. It's only two things you need to do to become spiritual. Obedience and prayer. Prayer keeps me humble before God, seeking after God. Obedience, watch this, builds up my spiritual sensitivity to God. So that all of a sudden when God speaks, oh, I can hear it. When, I'm, when, I, when, when he moves me, I can flow with him. That, that's what spiritual sensitivity does. And at this particular point, Eli is not operating there. God had to call young Samuel four times in order for him to perceive that God was calling him. You would think that being under his tutelage, he would be able to see what God was doing. He would be able to confirm what God had already spoken to him. And this is what happens with us. Sometimes we can become dull. So the one thing we want to do is follow after young Samuel's example and learning to be, again, sensitive to the spirit of God. So even when God is speaking, even though I may not know or understand that it's God speaking, I can hear him speaking. You follow? Amen. Another point we can glean from his call is our call is unique to our circumstances. Um, young Samuel was in what we call a transition ministry. Okay, well, why do you say a, a transition ministry? Because prior to him, they were under judges, right? 
So the scriptures talk about for 450 years, God gave Israel judges until who? Samuel the prophet. So God is transitioning this ministry. He's saying that Israel is at a place where they've become dull. God is saying spiritually, I now have to do something different with this nation. And so his ministry was a ministry of transition. It makes sense now. Think about this for a second. When God called him, he's in the temple being trained as a priest. But yet God didn't call him as a priest. Stop to think about that. And not only did he train him as a priest, but we see he also functioned, functioned as a judge because he stood at Mizpah to judge the nation of Israel. But yet his call, his call was to the office of prophet. And sometimes God takes us, if you will, in our ministries through this process. And, and sometimes what we don't understand is we get stuck in the process. He could have declared, man, my ministry is, is, is the office of the priesthood. Lord, I know you ain't called me into the office of prophet. I'm going to sit over here and I'm just going to do this. I think this is what happens with us. We get stuck in these ministries and we think that this is all God has called me to do. Well, you just called me to be an usher, Lord. Well, that's just what I'm going to do. Well, you just called me to do the music ministry. Well, that's all I'm going to do. And what you don't understand is that what God is doing in you and through you is transitioning you through certain things. Uh, our beloved pastor, I mean, just think about his transition here in Greater Friendship. <laughs> from this place to that place to that place, but God knew from the beginning of time that this was the place that he had ordained. So the same thing is true with us. I think we get stuck in our ministries. And, and I'm going to be so bold as even to say, watch this. You, you outgrow, if you will, certain places and positions in the church. And you even outgrow certain congregations. Huh? Do you realize that sometimes it's time for you to move on to another ministry? We get into this place where we think just because I was born in greater friendship, that's where I pose to stay. Who told you that? When everything you've gotten here was intended for you to go somewhere else now. And that was intended to take you somewhere else until God places you in the place and the position that he's ordained for you. And so part of what we're trying to, 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 to do here, just stop to think about this. We're talking about faithful servants. Well, what is it about the faithful servants? The one thing that they understand is once again, I may be doing some stuff, I just don't need to get stuck there. I, I really don't. I don't need, because God may be, be calling me and beckoning me to do something different. But like with most of the other people who are called, you take Isaiah for an example. When God called him, he says, well, Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips. So we become fearful. When you think about the, the call of Jeremiah, his excuse was, I'm just a child. So we start making excuses to stay what we are. And we can't do that because that's going to hinder us from being able to move forward and wanting as a, as a congregation what God wants for us. So all of us, we want to be in that place to allow God to position us exactly where he wants us to be. I know for a fact pastor is in a place right now, and I see him back there nodding his head because this is where he is now. He's trying to get the church to move in the place that God has ordained for us. The problem with the congregation is that some of us are stuck in our ministries. You just want to stay right there doing the same thing that God is saying, I got something greater for you. I got something different for you. In fact, I need to move you out of the way so I can put this person here that I've actually ordained to be there right now. So what you have to understand, your call sometimes is unique to your circumstance. Let me give you some testimony here. Moses' call was to deliver Israel. Stop to think about that. It wasn't his job to bring Israel into the land of Canaan. That was Joshua's job. 
them. So Moses' job was to deliver them out of Israel. Joshua's job was to take the people that were delivered out of Israel and lead them into the land that they can obtain rest. That was his ministry. Nothing more, nothing less. David's call. What was David's ministry? To give Israel rest from their enemies. That was his ministry. What was Solomon's ministry? To establish the temple of God. That was his ministry. Watch this. Look at Jesus' uh, call. What was his ministry? To reconcile the world. That was his ministry. Unique to the circumstances. Watch this. Peter's ministry. What was Peter's ministry? He was apostle. So was Paul. Well, Peter's ministry, watch this, was to the Jews. Paul's ministry was to the Gentiles. So what, what am I saying? That our calling is unique to our circumstances. We're not all called to do the same exact thing. The ministry that we're currently under is in transition. I thank God that our pastor understands he doesn't have to be his father. I thank God he understands that God has given him a vision to take the church differently than the previous pastor and the pastor before that and the pastor before that. Why? Because he has a ministry that is unique to our circumstances. And we all have ministries that are unique to our circumstances. And I think that's important to understand when you start to consider being a servant, that God has given you something that only you can do. He didn't tell Minister Gordon to do it. He didn't tell Sister Gordon to do it. He called you to do it. And guess what? You're the only person that can do it. Amen? Now, something I, I do want to share with you, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, I think is important about our ministry, because with our ministry, uh, God has given unto us different gifts, right? And I'm going to read uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses uh, 10 through 11. He says, as each of us has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may, glo may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. So what is that simply saying to us? That whatever God is calling us to do, we just simply do it according to the grace and the ability that God has given unto us. Anything that God has called me to do, he's always already equipped me, whether I understand it, believe it, or receive it or not. I've never seen a person God has called that he didn't equip them to do whatever it is that he called them to do. The only problem is that we have to put ourselves in a position where first we believe it, first we're able to hear it, <laughs> and then we are able to receive it. Amen? The other thing I'd like to bring out about our call is that Remember, whatever it is that God has called you to do, as he did with young Samuel, he does it from the womb. You just didn't come into the body of Christ and God discovered that you have this gift. No, you discovered <laughs> that you got this gift. But what you don't understand is that all of our gifts are given to us from the womb before the foundation of the earth. In fact, Ecclesiastes reminds us, everything under heaven has a purpose. And if everything under heaven has a purpose, what that simply says is, there's a function for this thing. There's nothing that God has created that does not have a purpose. So the first thing that I think that we have to understand as a church, God didn't call you to be a pew warmer you have a function. You have something that God has called you to do. But like young Samuel, we have to be in a position where we can hear. 
And even if I can't hear, or I'm not able, let me say this, I can hear. So even if I, I'm not quite sure that it's God calling, I, I will say this, and I've said this to you before. One thing that God does, he'll speak it to you first, but I guarantee you he will confirm it through the spiritual leadership around you. Anything that God has called you to do. And so that becomes their job to be able now to guide you through the process, right? Showing you what your gift is and showing you how that particular gift functions and operates. But one of the things that they're able to do is also to confirm that there's a gift inside of you. Something that is to be used for the glory and the honor of God. Now watch this. Let's consider for a moment Jeremiah's call. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet. So one of the things, I'm going to say this again, I think we need to recognize and, and understand is that whatever it is, whatever our gifts are, trust me when I tell you, you've been doing them the whole time. I never understood this about, I, now, now, now understand something. I am not a preacher. I'm a teacher. I've been anointed to teach. I've been a, I'm not, I'm not apt to teach. I'm anointed to teach. There's a difference. Now watch this. God showed me something a long time ago, I, I, and, and, and he used this to bear witness to the point that I'm making. I've been teaching all my life. I just didn't recognize that that's what I was doing. I remember I was in English class. The teacher was trying to explain something. The entire class just could not get it. And this is when we're in grade school. And so I raised my hand and asked the teacher if I could explain it. And when I explained it, the entire class understood. I, what I didn't understand was my anointing to teach. That's what I didn't understand. And so what we have to understand about our gifts, whatever they are, they come natural to you. That's why it's a gift. You don't have to learn it. It has to be cultivated. But you don't have to learn how to do that. It's almost something inside of you. It's just, I don't know how I know how to do it. I just know how to do it. That's why it's called the gift. It was given to you. And many of our gifts, everyone in the church keeps trying to say, well, man, I'm trying to find out what my gifts are. Man, whatever your gift is, you've been doing it the whole time. Whatever your gift is. The difference is, however, watch this. Until you learn to recognize your gift, your gift is not yet consecrated unto the Lord, which means that it doesn't have any anointing on it because it's been used to glorify you. I took my same gift, unfortunately, because of what I can do. I used it to pervert the things of God. I was teaching men the wrong things. I knew people would follow me. I knew people would hear me, but unfortunately, what I didn't understand is I was taking the very gift that God had given me and I corrupted it. Until I got saved and God began to, to have me to understand my spiritual gift is teaching and therefore persuasion. And therefore now the gift is to be used to glorify him rather than myself. Does that make sense? So what happens is, I'm gonna say this to you again, <clears throat> whatever your gifts are, it's natural to you. You've been doing it all your life. It's something that God gave to you from the womb. Another witness to this, obviously, uh, is our beloved Paul over in Galatians chapter uh, 1, looking at verse 15. He says, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace. So Paul being an apostle, I'm going to say this to you again, that was not a new development. God already knew from the beginning of time what he was going to do through Israel and that he was going to use Peter and that he was going to use Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles. That didn't just happen because he just decided one day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to send Jesus into the world and the Jews, they ain't going to particularly want to be bothered with, 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 with the gospel, so I'm going to let uh, Peter handle that. And then, No, that's not just something that just developed. God already knew from the foundation of the world how all this would go. 
and this is true of our gifts. The only thing is, either we're going to humble ourselves before God and acknowledge our gifts and allow him to and, and allow them to be used for his glory, or we're going to just not hear God and choose to just do what we do. Now, let me say this to you. The scriptures say the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. In other words, whatever gift you got, God gave to you. He ain't taking that away. Here's the thing. You'll stand before him on the day of judgment to give an account for it. What did you do with the gift I gave you? That's going to be the question because with everything that God has ever created, it has a purpose. So the question for us, greater friendship, becomes, am I taking the gift that God is using or giving me, am I using it for his glory? Or am I stuck in a ministry where God is trying to transition me and move me, but yet I won't transition, I won't move because this is where I'm stuck. So we want to be in a position just like our young Samuel here, where we're able to sense and discern the voice of God, even though I may not even know it's God that's speaking. But when leadership around you is spiritual enough to discern that there's this gift operating in you, at some point you have to humble yourself before that and accept it. And now you got a choice. Either I'm going to function in this thing or I'm just going to keep on in my rebellion. Because at the end of the day, that's really the choice, ain't it? If I, I know that I got this gift, so, so either, you know, around, around my neighborhood, we used to say either you're going to preach or die. In other words, you know God has called you, so either you're going to do what God called you to do or spiritually you're just going to die on off. Because that, that's the choice when we know that. God is calling us. <sighs> now, let's deal with the reason uh, for Samuel's response. So, so obviously, when Eli called him, uh, he recognized that God had called, right? He, he heard that. He knew. But he went to Eli instead of going to God. So God finally perceived, or, or Eli rather, finally perceived that it was the Lord calling. So he just simply says, when the Lord calls, just say, here am I. So here's the reason for that. Watch this. The scripture said Samuel had not yet known the Lord. He had not yet been able to discern the voice of God. And so what, happen what happens with us is we have to put ourselves in a position with every gift that God gives you. Don't you realize it has to be cultivated? Think about a, gosh, a, a garden. A garden, in order for it to be fruitful and to bring forth meaningful fruit, it has to be cultivated. Our gifts, they have to be cultivated. That thing was given to you from the beginning of time. Again, my gift of teaching. Being able to speak and explain things and clearly understand them has been given to me from the very beginning, but that gift also had to be cultivated. So I, I was able to be trained, Pastor, to hear God. Trained to adequately be able to explain with clarity the Word of God. So with all our gifts, this is, the, this is what was going on with young Samuel. So God has him in the beginning stages of his training. So yes, he had, as a young man, again, been trained in the office of a priest, but yet what we find, he had been in that position all this time, but he still couldn't hear God. No, let, let me rephrase that. He could hear God, he couldn't recognize that God was speaking. And so that's the place where we need to be, understanding that our gifts, everyone, has to be cultivated. Every gift we have has to be cultivated. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves flailing, if you will, with our gifts. So this is the reason why young Samuel couldn't hear God. I'm going to say this. I think it's important. Our call doesn't always follow protocol. <laughs> Stop to think about that. Our, our call doesn't always follow protocol. Oh, well, what do you mean by that? Sometimes we have this progression that we say it needs to go like this, it needs to go like that. Stop to think about this. Young Samuel was a Levite, which meant that his ministry should have been where? in the priesthood. But instead, God uses him also as a judge.
for Israel. And finally commissions and calls him as a prophet out of protocol. Out of protocol. According to Israel's history, he was supposed to simply be a priest. And if God really wanted to elevate him, he would just simply make him the high priest. But that's not what God, God did. Think about at the same time something going out of protocol, a ministry going out of protocol. Think about uh, the Apostle Paul. He was not one of the original 12, was he? The, the scriptures say that God called him out of due season. In other words, we don't always follow this protocol. I know in greater friendship, one thing we, we try to do is when you're called into ministry, it kind of goes like this. Well, you, you might be an usher, then you go to being a deacon, <laughs> then you go to... But what happens when God just decides, I don't want you to go through none of that? Out of protocol. We had to be careful about our calling and our gifting. And, and you need to be clear, just like young Samuel was, very clear, very clear. I got four more minutes, very clear about how God is speaking to you. Understanding that, Lord, I need to be in the position like young Samuel that I can hear your voice. And when I hear your voice, let me be like the young Samuel was. He was obedient very quick to obey what God had been speaking to him, right? And then understanding at the same time that my spiritual growth and maturity in terms of my gifting, it has to be cultivated. It has to be cultivated so I can be effective in my ministry, amen? Now watch this, very simple. Samuel's ministry in and of itself, just stop to think about it, and we can just kind of just say this. His ministry to Israel was that of a prophet. Well, his ministry as a prophet was, was to warn the people of God, because that's what the prophets of God did. In fact, we saw that in his exchange with Eli. The word that he gave to him was a word of rebuke, wasn't it? a call to repentance. This is what the prophets did in the Old Testament. And so much so to the point that it seemed like the prophets just really didn't never have anything good to say. When, when he went to Ramah to anoint David as king, when he showed up Samuel, what they said to him, they said, man, uh, do you come in peace? Because that's how God used the prophets. And so one of the things I'd like to highlight, aside from their function in the Old Testament, watch this, in terms of how they function, I'm going to say this again, they function to give rebuke, to reprove, to correct, to call the nation to a place of repentance. That's how God used, the, used them. But watch this. The thing that's really overlooked, however, and I want to read this verse of Scripture, and we're going to end right here. Uh, I'm going to take you over into Acts chapter 3. Now, let me show you some real significance about the prophets. And we're going to end it right here. Look at chapter 3, start at verse 18. And in this particular text, we know that uh, Peter has just healed this young man, and now uh, the religious leaders are kind of marveling. Everybody's like, man, what, what's going on? And now, here, here's what he says, and I, I relate this to the prophets. Watch this. But those things which God had showed by the mouth of all his prophets. Everybody say all his prophets. That Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. And then in verse 24 it says, yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many have as spoken, have likewise foretold of these things. So what am I saying? The prophets were not only used uh, to rebuke Israel, but they were also foretelling of what? The coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So they were preaching the gospel. That is my point. This was Samuel's ministry. That was his ministry. Now watch this. That may not be your ministry. That was his ministry in Israel. Amen? Father, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that, Lord, it is a
comfort to our hearts, oh God. And Lord, my hope this morning and my prayer is very simple for 